Hello everybody, I am Boston from the Boston YouTube channel and welcome to my review of the Five Nights at Freddy's movie, an indie horror game that blew up in mass so much that we got a whole movie about it, which was pretty exciting. I've been anticipating this movie basically ever since it was rumored, and then when it actually was announced, I'm like, oh shoot, gotta check this out. There was no way I was gonna miss out on this. So yeah, this is gonna be just kind of my unscripted review of the movie, just talking about things that I liked and some things that I thought could be a little better. Now, I'm assuming y'all watch this, but just in case, if you want my spoiler-free, just general review i thought the movie was great it had some pretty charming moments and the animatronics looked fantastic and it wasn't really scary movie and the plot was fine it just kind of used some of what the game had and just kind of changed it up a little bit to fit the movie format more and it did a not bad job at it especially if you're a Five Nights at Freddy's fan although if you aren't a fan of Five Nights at Freddy's I can see that the movie might not be for you just because things just might not make too much sense or they just feel anticlimactic unless you understand the context they come from so now that I got the generally free spoiler stuff out of the way let's just dive into the meat and bones of this actual movie the main character is Mike, as you guys probably know from the FNAF games, and uh, he's trying to get a job, and he's kind of having a hard time doing it, especially after attacking a dad that took his child that he thought it was like a kidnapping because it reminded him of his past. I actually really liked um, the sequences in the woods where he's like trying to put together exactly what happened. I thought that was a really cool idea and like a cool murder mystery kind of thing here. Well, not murder mystery, but like mystery solving case, which I thought was honestly a really smart idea. And so he's struggling to get a job and the only job he can really take is the five nights at freddy's job work at freddy fazbear's pizza to watch over the abandoned factory or not factory abandoned pizzeria that uh people like to try to come in and break in and leave around the most expensive animatronics around and you know just casually leave them on stage but you know we gotta protect them anyway you're not gonna vault them up or move them or anything and so yeah he decides to take a job there and the phone guy i think is springtrap i'm not entirely sure at the end of the movie but we're not gonna hop right in the end of the movie right now that's <laughs> just gonna mention that so yeah he goes to the job and then just kind of sleeps for most of it it isn't really like the game exactly where there's closing door the animatronics are coming after him trying to kill him so i guess that's like the most inaccurate thing about fnaf is just the gameplay aspects but i don't think the game aspects would translate perfectly well of the movie it's fine that they kind of remixed it and changed it up quite a bit i didn't mind it too much, honestly. I think watching him just close doors and watch cameras and stuff like that might have been boring. I mean, there's Markiplier. You can literally just watch a Markiplier Let's Play if you really want to see that. So I get why they decided to be a little bit more unique. Because if it's like, this is the first Five Nights at Freddy's movie. So why not make it a little different, you know? Some people might say it's underwhelming. I thought it was fine. And let's talk about the animatronics themselves. They are perfect like actually perfect i didn't think the game would translate so perfectly to real life but it does and it's kind of scary i mean they look cutesy for like you know a kid's restaurant if they foxy wasn't torn up and they were a little better conditioned but like <laughs> yeah it's also kind of very terrifying <laughs> like they also just control very robotically thank god they didn't decide to like put them in suits or anything like that i feel like that would have just made them look too human even if they try to act robotic it's like that's never going to be as perfect as like an actual robot and like a controller i looked at it i think ryan 8-bit ryan or whatever made a video on it. i saw it it was like one of those fake controller things from like 2010 where people would be like playstation 5000 and it had like a million control sticks and buttons on it and now the controller is real gosh dang it we have really evolved in times which it's quite a cool, I, I give props to those who built them and props to those who actually controlled it because it seems like hard to control. Outside the pizzeria is mainly like this plot point where like this woman or whatever is trying to take custody of the sister of Mike's sister because apparently he's been really bad or whatever like that and he's trying to take the child and get money off of that even though she seems pretty well off honestly the plot point was whatever it was just there just kind of gave him more of a reason to like get the job i guess like that if he's like has to support his sister as well and keep the house you know so she's not living on the streets especially since you know he seems to really care about his siblings especially after the brother being kidnapped and all that stuff but yeah i wasn't really there it didn't really complete i don't remember if the woman died or the plot point was just like okay you know what the woman comes in she's like i'm taking custody of her child now or whatever she runs in the room destroys all the pictures or whatever and that's like the last thing i remember of that plot point after that it was like just dropped like either she died or just didn't really continue after that which for fnaf fans they probably don't really give 
10 shits or one shit about any of the stuff that happens outside the pizzeria. They just want to see the animatronics go berserk on these people and also be cute now because they were actually pretty friendly to uh, Abby, I think is her name. So, I mean, it was interesting. I mean, it's kind of cool to see like the more happier side of these animatronics and the playful side because, you know, at the end of the day, these are kids sh shoved into animatronic suits. Like, it's freaking whack, but I mean, it's at least cool to see the kids side of them and it kind of brings more human to them, which is surprising because I never thought I would see a human side to killer animatronics, but yeah, they did end up killing. The kills were kind of cool, and the movie wasn't really scary or anything. I felt more like just entertaining thriller and all that stuff like that. It was more like hype, like seeing the freaking cupcake bite someone's face off and everything, and the freaking Freddy Fazbear bite someone in half, and then like 20 kids screaming, was that the bite of 87? Also, let's just talk about kind of the movie theater experience because I feel like for this movie in particular, it's going to be important. The movie theater, at least from what I went to and many other experiences, it is loud. It is like a Nintendo Direct is happening and everyone's cheering over everything. A lot of kids, there's a lot of cool cosplayers there, but a lot of kids definitely screaming and stuff like that. A lot of teenagers too, getting all hyped up, cheering over everything. Like when the globe showed for the intro, it went freaking level nine earthquakes up in this bitch because holy shit, my eardrums bleeding. And it went on for five minutes straight. And a part of me kind of enjoyed it where like it was like kind of hype you know we all come together we're all big fans of fnaf for years and we're all cheering over all like the spring traps and like the plot points matt pat cory matt pat blew up the whole movie theater again like i couldn't hear any single line of dialogue for the next three minutes after that everyone was so hyped but a part of me was also a little bit annoyed just because people literally talked over the entire movie like you just hear a lot of talking people were taking pictures with the flash on and lighting up the whole movie theater which can be distracting and you it was hard to hear some of the dialogue so if you aren't really a type of person that wants like those super hype moments i'd highly recommend just watching it at home with like your by yourself or with a few people that no won't scream over the movie because i feel like i can definitely see people being annoyed by that just something to keep in mind anyway i went off sidetrack so yeah i'm trying to characters they were happy nice stuff like that and also had some cool killer moments like that they had some balloon boy jump scares which obviously they're kind of just cheap whatever jump scares not bad or anything just cool i guess just to kind of see uh balloon boy there and kind of heading into the final part where like spring trap shows up which again i'm not sure if it's phone guy or not like that and that was pretty hype honestly i can definitely see people that don't know fnaf being like who the heck is this guy he's got little to no screen time beforehand and now he's suddenly like this killer robot he's like responsible for all these kids and then he just dies out like if you're not a fnaf fan i can definitely see why they would find that anticlimactic but for like fnaf fans you're like yo spring trap is here and yo the spring lock's going off and all that stuff like i feel like for fnaf fans especially me i'm like yes this is cool seeing it live in theaters but like obviously it could be a little anticlimactic for some especially if they don't really know the FNAF lore and don't know like the significance of him being spring trapped and locked in this suit because of FNAF 3 and onwards and all that stuff like that and then like the whole pizzeria falls apart and I think they all live happily ever after I'm not sure <laughs> I kind of don't really remember so yeah that's just kind of the general overview of the movie let's just talk about kind of the camera work lighting voice acting all stuff like that the actors did a pretty solid job for the most part I have really enjoyed most of their performances it wasn't really performance that really was like wow this was bad and took me out of it like that i mean there's matt pat and cory which kind of took me out of it because i'm like okay well they're youtubers i've watched them for a while so it's like hey cool so i know them more for like their youtuber parts than like fnaf actors but it wasn't their fault anyway like they still did a phenom phenomenal job and stuff like that all the little references too like um i think sparky the dog like the original hoax was in it like they had the sparky restaurant matt pat was working at and then like the destroyed version of it which is kind of interesting and i'm kind of curious if like it'll be a real thing like eventually maybe in fnaf 2 movie or the fnaf 3 movie i know those movies were at least planned so maybe we'll get some sparky action that might be interesting you know it was a little different from the original fnaf lore so might as well just go full dive in there and just you know rewrite the lore a little bit because why not i don't think it's really canon to the game lore so make it fun and unique to compare to the games and lighting and all this the sets and everything like that all were phenomenal i never really have any complaints about that it was like dark and spooky for most of it and if it needed to be bright out and stuff like that it was pretty well done there and yeah so i think that covers basically every single opinion i have about the movie overall i'll give it an 8 an 8.5 out of 10 maybe somewhere around that zone i thought it was a really solid movie i had a great time uh, some points were just like okay whatever who cares fnaf fans aren't gonna care about the cut city plot of you know this 
kid and some random older woman. <laughs> I had a great time. It was a fun time. Definitely hype. Definitely cool to see kind of the main things happen and all the references and all that stuff like that. Just really, when they said it was made for fans, it really was made for fans, but I don't think it's for anyone that's beyond a fan. The more you like and care about FNAF, which I'm a big fan of FNAF, I've covered FNAF fan games and I've been in FNAF, Markiplier, all that stuff like that, those fandoms and all that stuff. So obviously this was going to mean a lot to me, but if you aren't, again, it might not be for you. And it's not a horror film if you are planning on seeing a horror film. There's plenty of other ones that are more scary than this one. Heck, I think even Scream was more scary. And, and Scream is like more of a comedy horror kind of thing. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Tell me what you thought of the FNAF movie in the comment section below. Did you like it? Did you dislike it? What parts did you like? What parts did you not really like? And yeah, leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're brand new. And of course, I'll see you on the next one. Bye!